to another chapter of Turing Dev Talks. This is Joy, your host for the day, and I'm signing in from Nigeria. And on the panel here today, we have Guilherme joining us from Brazil. Guilherme has about four years of experience in DevOps, Golang, Ruby, Dockers, and Kubernetes. And today, he's here to share some expert advice on how developers can make the best use of Golang. He will also share some excellent tips to prepare for a Golang interview. So let's get started. Hi, Guilherme. First of all, thanks a lot for joining us today. How are you doing? And how was it worth treating you? Hi, Joy. I'm doing great. Uh, the work is going well, and I think we are making great progress there. Looks like you've had quite a fulfilling day at work. So let's dive deep into the discussion for the day. So can you quickly tell our audience about Golang and why it is being labeled as the next gen language? So Go is a high level general purpose programming language. It is strongly and statically typed. Uh, it is simple to learn. It has a great concurrency model, which makes it very easy to write efficient programs. Uh, it compiles quickly to machine code and you can easily target uh, different operating systems and architectures. It also has a garbage collector, which means the programmer doesn't need to worry about memory management. Uh, it's probably been labeled as the next gen programming language because it does aim to fix a lot of the issues that are common in the conventional programming languages. And, and the result of that is a language that is very efficient, platform independent, and very fast in terms of compilation and performance. Awesome. Go does seem like an interesting choice. So, what would you say is the learning curve for Go? I think Go is very simple to learn. The language is intentionally simple, and in my experience, uh, learning its syntax and becoming productive with it doesn't take much time at all, especially if you have experience in you know, other statically type uh, imperative programming languages. Great. So you've talked about Go concurrency mechanism. Can you shed some more light on it? Sure. Concurrency is the ability to run multiple functions that are independent of each other. Uh, in Go, a Go routine is a function that is capable of running concurrently with other functions. When you create a function uh, as a Go routine, the function will be scheduled to run uh, in basic in one of the available logical processors. Uh, the Go runtime scheduler sits on top of the operating system and is responsible for scheduling the Go routines according to the need for CPU time. That sounds quite interesting. So what would you say are Go supports, resources, and community spaces like? I think the community is very good. If you're facing any issues, you can probably find uh, many channels of people willing to help you with whatever issues you're dealing with. For resources, I think the official GitHub repository is a great place to start. Uh, the Go Week links to, a, links to a lot of great resources. And the repository itself is a great place to go if you want to interact with the community and perhaps even contribute to the language design yourself. Great. So they seem to be progressing quite quickly. And now talking about progress, how does Go compare with some similar languages like Python? Uh, both Python and Go have a very simple syntax and are relatively easy to learn. Go is much faster than Python, generally speaking. Python tends to dominate in the data science. Uh, Go is more used for system programming. Uh, because Python is an older language, it has a lot of very mature libraries. Go doesn't have as many. Uh, Python's dynamic, dynamic typing uh, can make it easier than Go to be, do quick prototypings. And it's often easier to run applications at large scale with Go since the language was designed to solve problems at a large scale and this idea for large concurrent applications. So each has their own pros and cons, but ideally you should learn both. Okay, I hope you all are following and took note of the last bit. Now over to you, Guilherme. So what were you working on before Go and how did the switch come about? I had some experience with C++ and PHP by doing some internships in college. And during my final year, I needed a language with good cryptographic support. Go seemed like a good option at the time, so I decided to learn it and to use it for my final project. And after graduating, I went to a company where they were mainly developing in Go, and I've been doing it professionally ever since. Oh, that's great. So now in your experience working with Go, 
what can you say are some of the limitations you have come across? Uh, though it's very simple. So there are a lot of synthetic sugars and functions that he might be used to. If you're coming from another language, they're going to exist in Go. So developers will need to adapt to that. Uh, the lack of generics was also a big limitation that Go had. Uh, this often forces developers to create workarounds by the cost of convenience and efficiency. Fortunately, uh, generics were finally introduced in Go 118. So this should no longer be a problem in the future. Great. Now, all, all said and done, these limitations aren't affecting the user as much. According to a recent Go developer survey done by the Go team, satisfaction with Go still remains very high at 92%, and that is a very high number. So moving on, we've talked about the various features and comparisons of Go, but Gamer, I think our discussion will be incomplete without talking about where Go is used. So could you please shed some light on some of the industries and platforms that use Go? Uh, Go is not really suited for developing network services such as APIs, web service, and frameworks for web applications. Many standout cloud platforms like Kubernetes were built in Go. Uh, Google Cloud also uses Go to enhance scalability and performance. Go is well suited for building small tooling items. This can launch quickly and be easily packaged for redistribution. Uh, online platforms like YouTube, SoundCloud, and Netflix, which controls tons of data, also rely on Go for data processing. Go is also often used in on-demand services like Uber, which uh, uses the language to very quickly process every user request. Uh, they also made some significant contributions to the community by open sourcing some very useful libraries. Interesting. I'm sure this would give our developers a good idea of various applications of Go. And here I'd like to call upon all senior developers who are willing to work remotely with companies in the US. We have jobs in 100 plus technologies, including Go. So if you're confident about your skill set, head on to turing.com slash jobs and apply now. So it's time to wrap up our talks. Gamer, it's been a pleasure talking to you about Go. But before we let you go, could you please share some advice on the topics one can use while preparing for an interview of a Go developer profile? Yes, uh, learn about Go's concurrency model, learn about interfaces, learn about select channels, go routines, the runtime scheduler, learn about Go's uh, common design patterns, and read the standard library. It's a great place to read for reference since it generally favors simplicity and readability over performance. Awesome. That was quite helpful. Thanks a lot, Game. Thank you for throwing some light on the applications, features, and uses of Go. And it has been quite a learning experience for me. And I hope it is the same for all of you who tuned in for our talk. And if you have any queries, feel free to drop us an email at support at Let us know in the comments below what you'd like to learn in the next video. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you like this video. And do not forget to subscribe to Turing.com. We will be back with many such Turing developer stories. Till then, stay safe and click on the link in the description below to apply to Turing. Thank you.